Whether this is your first time with us or you visited before, we extend a warm welcome to you. It was such a positive experience. There was such unity in the community and unity in the parish and all of us children, just about every child that I knew on the island belonged to this church. So that, that cohesiveness has stuck with me and I have a fond, good feeling every time I drive by this church. I always found the church welcoming and I felt at home the first time I came. I kind of grew up in the church. We spent a lot of time. All my memories are tied with the church. I believe the heart of the community of Sanibel grew out of this church. I'm Dabney Smith. I am the fifth bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Southwest Florida, the diocese which was established in 1969. What you are about to see is how the parishioners of St. Michael and All Angels express their church mission and uh, most particularly their six guiding principles in their daily lives as Christians who are fed by their lives at St. Michael's. I don't know any other way of understanding Jesus Christ in my life other than saying he is living through each one of us. The only way we're going to make an old story really be the kingdom of God on earth is by living it outside of the building. Remember that Christ died for you, so feed on him in your hearts by faith and with great thanksgiving. If your church is protected by the Archangel Michael, the great, mighty, uh, robust warrior Angel Michael, and a host of other angels and seraphim and cherubim, if your congregation is protected and inspired and encouraged and uplifted by all the angels, it's no wonder that the congregation is empowered to wonderful ministries and wonderful care of each other, care of creation, care of God's people near and far. And that's true of St. Michael's Church. I found a wonderful facilitator that we hired to lead us through a strategic planning process. And it was seven or eight full days. So the vestry and the chancellor, we all became the strategic planning team. We actually had a full week-long meeting with the consultant and put together the vision, mission, the guiding principles, and a strategic plan for many areas of the church. It was discussing what people thought our church was all about and what's important in guiding us in our, our faith. We met for the better part of a year to determine just that, all those guiding principles, the, the vision and the mission for St. Michael's. For a congregation, I think that's very far-sighted. All too often, we get in a routine that we go to church, and we go to church because we go to church. I don't think I've ever seen in any church a description of how uh, you, you might focus your life in our church and why you might want to be active in this church. And that those guiding principles, I think, have become very meaningful. Every day I see this when I open my calendar. So there was a tremendous amount of study that went into forming the strategic plan. The people here want to, want to learn more, they want to grow in their faith more, and they want to make a contribution to the world in Christ's name. So this is a hyperactive congregation. We raised our kids here, and this is their church, this is their home. We don't live close to our kids' grandparents, and all of a sudden they had 75 grandparents. And, and we will never be thankful enough for the level at which those people engaged in our kids. Everyone absolutely embraced them, and I think our kids are much better off for their experience of that. Our vision is transforming lives through Christ. Our mission is to demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ so that all may come to know God. We do this through six guiding principles, the first of which is faith. 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 I love the praying the Eucharistic prayer because it is a faith statement all by itself. 
And uh, I think most people don't realize that when we are praying that, we are simply saying what Christianity believes. And, and, and then we share the meal. Um, and, and the fact that we've been doing that for century after century after century is a sheer act of obedience to something that we trust. In the Book of Common Prayer, now we're covered uh, much of the ancient liturgy of the church which is you know a reminder to us it's not just a traditional way of doing things it's a reminder to us that our faith is not brand new that we don't reinvent our faith with every generation that we are in that line of faith and worship that goes all the way back to the decade or so after jesus crucifixion when I think about faith, my mind and heart immediately go to our baptismal covenant. This is where our faith is rooted, in the promises that we make in our baptism. One of those promises is to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbor as ourselves. I choose life for us because we're in this together. And so Maxwell will get to grow up either learning that we are trustworthy or not. That's a rich sense of the covenant of baptism. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Oh, Let us welcome the newly baptized. Most people who are baptized don't remember it. They were baptized as infants, little children, and they have no recollection of what that baptism ceremony was in their life. And the parents and godparents are the ones that really make the promises for that child on their behalf. An infant doesn't freely choose to be baptized. It's really a decision of the parents and the godparents to present that child to God and to the world and to the community that they're a part of. And that community in turn then also takes on baptismal promises to help raise that child. This baptismal promise reminds us that each of us are dwelling places for God. Pedro David Harris Guardado, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I think uh, baptism is one of the primary doors into the church. As we are baptized into Christ, he lives in us and we are able to walk with him and be transformed. When young people become teenagers, they start to engage in a process called confirmation. And they're called confirmation candidates. They go through a process of exploring what the Episcopal Church is. They learn about the history of the Episcopal Church. They learn about the Bible and what their baptism really was if they were baptized as children. Bishop, I present Madeline Bredlaw for confirmation. Madeline, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. And with God's grace, I will follow him as my Savior and Lord. And then it becomes their choice. It's their decision to be confirmed. They go from being a candidate to actually being a confirmand. They have made that decision. They have confirmed their baptismal vows that were given to them and were spoken for them by their parents, and now they are a part of the church. And it really is a, it's a wonderful ceremony. In the Episcopal Church, the bishop is the only person that can confirm people. Defend, O Lord, your servant Madeline with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever. Confirmation is a community celebration, and you are being confirmed into the whole body of the Episcopal Church. And then the bishop asks of the congregation, will you help these people become full members of the Episcopal Church and baptized members of Christ? And if so, respond, 
I will. Congregation, family, and friends, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in her life in Christ? We will. That's the, a great part of the ceremony because there's a very loud I will from everyone there proclaiming that they will help these people to continue their journey in Christ. Rosemary, may the Holy Spirit who has begun a good work in you. I will with God's help. Not just I will, but I will with God's help. It carries with it the acknowledgement that you want to be part of a Christian community. That notion of being on this journey of, of faith where because, because of what God has done for us, we're prepared to take risks for Him. My whole career has been, in a way, a, a set of risks in each case, I set out feeling kind of like Abraham, not knowing where God wanted me to go, but as it says in the Hebrew, ha, which essentially means get up and go, Abraham. The thing about faith is that we can think about it as believing in what we can't see, but our faith is always about what we do. Our faith is about practice. The root of that word in the Hebrew and in the, in the Greek One's really talking about trust, and that's talking about risk. Take up your cross and follow me. It's not just coming to church and kneeling down and praying every Sunday or Saturday night. It's prayer and action. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us. I think if I could sum up the things that are most important to me are my faith and the service that I'm able to offer to other people. Something quite amazing, the Holy Spirit at work, has also intersected my service work with my faith because I was also called to be part of a ministry that I was not comfortable with, that I'd never done before, and that's the Sacred Dance Group. I was able to get in touch with a joy in myself and a movement that also helped me move through a time in my life where I needed to grow in different ways. Well, there's a lot of scriptures that talk about dancing, a time to dance and dancing. You know, praise is so many different methods. It just doesn't have to be singing or reading scripture. And dancing is huge. If you look at the world, a lot of different cultures and people dance. I felt comfortable here, even though I am of a different faith, but it didn't matter. You know, we're all serving the Lord, um, and this is my way of doing it. My first and foremost role is I assist the rector or the priest in charge. Secondly, my job is to help any parishioner. So if they come in needing help of any sort, my job is to help them. We value compassion. Therefore, we care for one another in the name of Christ. Compassion. 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 One of the things that I always like to remind people is that our call is to be the hands and heart and feet and voice of Christ. This is how we bring the compassion and love of Christ to others, by coming to St. Michael's Church to be shaped and formed in that compassion and love, and then going forth into the world to bring that compassion and love to each and every person that we meet. Some of the things that I think of, a parish nurse who would um, make, make it possible for us to have a more robust and educated and informed pastoral care ministry. Faith-based nursing, um, that certification is trying to make sure that you incorporate with your parishioners, knowing that they're not alone, if we needed to make sure that they got communion, if they wanted to see a priest. Faith was brought into that picture the way they wanted it. One of the things that I discovered really early on here at St. Michael's is that there is a tremendous pastoral reflex here. There is reflexive compassion in this place. That's how we live and express the compassion of Christ, by having that reflexive response to say, I will do something. I'll send a note or make a call. One of the things that we know about Jesus is that he 
ministered compassion one person at a time. In the people that he encountered throughout the stories in the gospel, he always had time for people on the margins. Uh, I mean, Jesus wasn't around preaching all the time. Where was he? You know, with, with people that marginalized people. And we're all marginalized. We <laughs> are. To an extent, we are. We're all working through our stuff. It's a hard walk, but Christ is with us <laughs> in that walk. It's like the ripple. It starts with the little world. We can only do some very small things. And that's a wonderful reminder for us who try to live out the compassion and love of Christ, that we do that best by reaching out to the one person who needs that compassion. And people have had good and bad experiences with organized religion, and they need to feel valued and, and not ashamed or not dismissed. I try to hear them. It's a little thing that they need to say, and sometimes it's thank you. Uh, and sometimes it's, you won't believe what's going on in my life. Maybe it's the intensity in their eyes. Now, sometimes when there's 50 people waiting in line, I've got to find a way to, to move it along. And then we laugh about it because they know, the people behind know what's happening. Uh, so that's kind of a good thing. It all kind of works out. We did make it through COVID. We recognized it right away. We had a medical committee that really had our best interests at heart. Oh, all doctors. They were the ones who watched the numbers. And the first week we were back in the church, they were watching. We had some people needing meals. Some people just feeling very much alone and wanted, wanted to know somebody was thinking about them and caring about them. We do a particularly effective job at St. Michael's with showing compassion. And I, I'll speak personally about that because I've felt it. I've experienced the compassion that the faith community has for others. To lots of people in the congregation, I'm a name on the prayer list. I was on the prayer list for a long time with my cancer, which was very serious. And I felt the prayers of the congregation. Uh, please keep um, some of these people in your prayers. I, I know that you are. There are people that I don't mention. Um, that you're also praying for. Someone came up to me the other day and said, do I still have to pray for you? <laughs> I said, no, it's optional, but please do if you, if, you, if you want to. But I think that the power of prayer and the strength of the faith, I felt as though I was really part of the faith community when I was not well. I really felt that in my own life. So much of the face of St. Michael's is a face of compassion. Being in Lee Memorial Hospital, the congregation was wonderful in sending get well cards, coming to visit me, sending emails, encouraging me to keep going and not to give up. And that really meant a lot to me to have the congregation um, backing me up and supporting me through that rough time. I see these two things clearly in Jesus, his compassion for other people. That's where his healing is healing people physically, healing people mentally, healing people emotionally. His presence healed people. This is a Christ-centered church with caring people. We care for one another. We value service. Therefore, we volunteer our time and talents. Service. 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 One of the things that really impresses me about St. Michael's is the long list of ways that people can be involved, not only in the church and its activities, but in the wider community. We reach out and serve our neighbors through local organizations like Fish and Pine Manor. We have a relationship with Mission Pinnell in Immokalee, where we provide them with things that they need and also gives people a chance to volunteer there. It was after my wife passed away and I wanted to do something in her memory. We needed seats around the campus, I thought, so I found this in a catalog someplace and uh, purchased them for the church. When I was pleased that the church was pleased to have them, 
And we are always finding ever new ways that we can reach out in love and service. At the end of each of our liturgies, we pray, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, gracious God, with gladness and singleness of heart. We go forth into the world to serve in God's name. We go forth to bring that love in service to our neighbor in need. Being of service, being in service, doing something that can help other people was not a brand new idea to me. It was something that I was raised with. Um, so it feels good to know that that's rather intrinsic. And there's very little value in having a spiritual belief if you're not in service to others. And St. Michael and All Angels truly embodies that and, and they embrace that. We, we support so many different organizations, both financially and spiritually, that I believe that many of our parishioners truly feel that their duty as a Christian, as a member of St. Michael and All Angels, is to be in service to others and you can feel the embodiment of I am a vehicle to go out into the world and provide for others. My favorite here is a healing ministry. Every Sunday, two or three of us go out in the garden by the church and pray for people. And I don't know what it does for the people, but it does a lot for me because it brings me closer to our Lord. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. Another ministry that I so enjoy is being a Eucharistic minister, both as a chalice bearer on the altar and at taking communion to people. Because when they receive the body and blood of Christ, their little faces light up and I see Christ in them. Now I think about how I've been able to, to get active in groups other than the church, which I think may have some effect on people knowing what a great church we have. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. Sometimes we had a whole load of kids and sometimes we just had one, but I tried to take one value, okay, and teach them that one value, you know, kindness, love, Hope. Well, this is a story about Jesus. And so they had to go to Bethlehem because that was the place where Joseph's ancestors came from. And we're told there was no room at the inn. I had such an age range of kids, if I could just focus on one nugget. And then all of a sudden, the heavens opened up and there were angels there. Angels, can you all stand up? Major yeah. A lot of angels. Yeah. Until the angel said what angels always say to people. Do not be afraid. They told the shepherds that Jesus had been born in Bethlehem. If we continue to feed the kids that we have, they bring friends. So I do see real potential in growing. folks had the great idea of 
because we had people moving off of the islands, off of Santa, Sanibel and Captiva, had the great idea of having a church shuttle bus, and that began a ministry of being sure that people who lived off island, especially those in and near Shell Point retirement community, would not be cut off from the church, but rather would be included in the ministries of the church. All of those six principles call to me. Well, the first has to do with service. And I led up a group called Women at the Well, a spiritual group, which had to do with inclusivity, had to do with integrity, compassion, and in that we shared stories with each other. We stewardship, and that we engaged hard topics, difficult conversations about our responsibility to community, to the planet, to each other. And that St. Michael's is filled with wonderfully talented, gifted people who love to, to be connected and to minister not only the people on the islands, but in Fort Myers and far, far beyond through the diocese and internationally. For 60 years, using the profits from the ARC, ECW has been able to give grants to worthy organizations, both in Southwest Florida and globally. In recent years, our grant program has also received funds from the parish budget. In a normal year, we are able to give grants well over $200,000. After Katrina, we went to New Orleans and we toured the Ninth Ward. They told us about what a devastated area that was because of the fact that the levees had failed. And they talked about psychologically how devastating that was to talk to people who just had nothing after their church washed away, they met on the concrete slab and said, Bishop, I heard that you just had confirmation at the cathedral, and how did you do that when the cathedral was devastated? And he said, yes, but God is still there. And I said to this mother, what do you need? And she said, I have four children and we don't even have spoons. One of our guiding principles is that we value stewardship. 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 Stewardship is sharing our gifts and talents. When we talk about stewardship at St. Michael's, we refer to it as time, talents, and treasure. Certainly the treasure part of that is important, our financial contributions to keep the church going. But equally as important are our time and talents, and using them in the service of God and other people. And the best example that I can think of using our time and talents in order to generate treasure is Noah's Ark Thrift Shop here at St. Michael's. Noah's Ark is a marvelous, marvelous, long ministry of this church where donated items are resold and then all of the proceeds of that are used to provide grants for worthy causes. God has blessed me far beyond what I need. Everything we have has come from God. And I've been abundantly blessed. So I feel compelled to give back to what I got from Him. As a stewardship is really not just the annual fun drive. Stewardship is care and it's caring for others and, and for the earth that sustains us. Well, I'd broaden our idea of stewardship to include the natural world and our responsibility to steward. I mean, here we are on the sanctuary island with everything from the city vision to the, um, to the mission statement of other churches that acknowledge the, the importance of animals, plants, non-human life, well, even non-believer traditions are finding their spirituality around creating a sustainable future. And it's at the heart of what people are hungering for. The choir members have a, a definite ministry. They uh, come here faithfully on Friday afternoons and then on Sunday mornings they come very, very early to rehearse. It's an important part of their life. They're, they're, as I said, there are people who come down here who sing in the northern churches 
and they think it's just a, a continuation of their ministry here. Another synonym would be the ministry of us. And we all feel that way. And the, the people of St. Michael and all angels have that feeling. It, it was like uh, Bruce Duncan used to talk about the thin place, that, that, that you were close to heaven. And every once in a while, you get goosebumps. And the choir tells me this, and I do too, that, that you never know when it's going to come. You just feel a closeness to God. And all of a sudden, they've come with a, a heavy heart. Uh, something has happened in their lives. Uh, or they're particularly happy a Sunday and the, the goosebumps come. I am excited about the future of the music program at St. Michael's. Our mission is to enable really fine worship back to God and to do beautiful worship that will enhance people's worship experience. The music program exists to give praise and glory to God, to make beautiful music and lead worship, and to communicate spiritually on a musical plane. We want to keep our members' minds sharp. We want to keep them curious and want to learn new things. Our outreach is doing good worship, but it's also special services as well. I love the Eucharist. I guess that's why I love the Episcopal Church, because I think the Eucharist is such a, a wonderful expression of who we are as Christians, and it just feels really good to come up here with everybody else. They just really give their hearts over to God, and in the process of that, they are relieved of all their kind of stress, and you see their shoulders sort of drop, and they kind of lighten up. The priest goes to each person and says, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, and then the Eucharistic minister follows with the chalice, which is the wine, and says, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Right, there's always a confession sort of before you come for Eucharist because it kind of clears the soul and makes you feel ready to come up and receive the body and blood of Christ. Feeling free and freed of burdens that you may have been carrying with you. But it's a really special time because for so many people, that's the moment. And so often they look up at you and you lock eyes. And, you know, the way I think about it, we listen to God in the scriptures. We pray to God in our prayers. We praise God in our singing, but we meet him in the Eucharist. It's after the service, it's always surprising when people come out and say, wow, that's what I really needed to hear. We value inclusivity, therefore we strive to include everyone. One of the major characteristics of Jesus' ministry was inclusivity. How he reached out and welcomed all who came to him or all whom he came upon. Jew or Gentile, man or woman, Samaritan, leper. Inclusivity. 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 Jesus' love was inclusive and expansive of all the people that he encountered. And that's what we try to reflect here at St. Michael's. We strive to build the beloved community where each and every person who comes through our doors, each and every person who encounters one of us out in the world knows that they are beloved. And they want to come to a place where they hear that message from Jesus in our worship, in our programs, in our outreach, and in the various ways that we have our life together. But when I was a kid, my friend, Kristen, her, they went to church every Sunday. And I went with them probably like maybe 10 times. I loved going to church. 
And the thing that upset me so bad was they would do communion and I would not, they wouldn't let me go with them. Like I had to sit, stay at, at my seat. So once I came here and I took communion, I was like, all right, finally got to do it. Based on Jesus's feeding of the multitudes, feeding of the 5,000, where Jesus fed everyone who came to him and was hungry, we offer communion to all who come to us, regardless of denomination, regardless of where you are on your faith journey, regardless of age, even little children are welcome to receive communion so that they will never have a memory of not being invited to the table. First encounter I had with St. Michael's, we came and dropped some stuff off for a client back here at the Noah's Ark. And, you know, me being who I was at that stage in life, with custody of four kids, um, and just divorced, I was like, you know, I got to go to church one day because it was 11 years I didn't um, attend a regular church. I sat in the same pew here, sat there, and um, all the kids were there, and then. that was the first time that we um, came to the church, and we came that Sunday, and I told the kids, I said, well, we're going back next Sunday again. Evelyn had a conversation with the vestry and said, look, we want to come to this church and we want to bring our children and you're expressing that you want them here, but they can't be wall decorations. You have to lean into them. You have to engage with them. You have to embrace them and bless their souls. So many people did. They, they found roles as acolytes and Eucharistic ministers and readers and all kinds of things that for us was a spiritual sort of underpinning for our kids. My job is really to find out what the rector wants and then to translate that into a written document. I see it as someone who really assist the priest in any way that's necessary. It was mostly an older population. There weren't many kids. So if they were to visit and see us on the altar. A couple kids from my school even go here, but not like all the time. But I would think if they came here more and more, they could be on the altar or in Sunday school all the time. Father Madden's astonishing ministries there. Uh, St. Michael's becoming one of the very first integrated churches in the area and in Florida. It was something we kind of stepped into and was like, you know, how is this going to go? But at the same point in time when we left, you know, we felt good. We met a lot of people and it, it, it honestly made us want to come back the next week. So, you know, it was, it, was, it was a nice experience. We were planning the wedding, you know, we didn't know how we were going to do it or, you know, how we were going to go about doing it. We know Ellen. Uh, was on our Ellen side. Had our back the whole time. So at the same point in time, we were thinking, you know, maybe we might tell some people from the church and no one would want to come, but it was a, a lot of people that, you know, showed up. Everyone wanted to be a part of it, but we didn't know how it was going to turn out to be, but it was support, you know, everyone supported our decision and, you know, they was here to help us. Right here on this altar. Right here. <laughs> right here. February 24th. Remember that. <laughs> I happen to have a partner, and I've had a partner now for 50 years, uh, the love of my life, and all through my parish ministry, nobody has ever challenged me with my relationship with my partner. So we all too often marginalize young people, and we go, oh, you're young, you don't know any better, you're not very important, you're not very capable. Well, they're super capable, and they're super important. Uh, and, and in this congregation, we have seen as a family that inclusivity of different generations being included. Ashley and Marvell, you have come here today to seek the blessing of God and of his church upon your marriage. And I require therefore that you promise with the help of God to fulfill the obligations which Christian marriage demands. We value integrity, therefore, we treat one another with honesty and respect. Integrity. 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 
We certainly have our differences, differences of views, differences in our politics, and we can disagree about things. But one of the things that we practice and model here in the church is that in spite of our differences, in spite of our different viewpoints, at the end, we always love one another. I think sort of a lasting impact of this church on our kids has been that they examine their lives. I think integrity too often gets confused with honesty. I would say year two here, I felt comfortable enough and people trusted me enough that trying to make that happen, you can begin to push a little bit in the sermons and you can begin to challenge a little bit putting myself in the mix too. You know, you're trying not to look right at someone when you're talking about sin or something. That's, that's kind of funny. And that has happened. It's been funny. Um, yeah, you will see, I might catch a little smile. Something's lit up. Or you'll, you'll see a tear. You know, behind every one of those smiles is something that's just really hit home. There's the, the sermon that you prepare and the sermon you preach, but the most important thing is the sermon that people hear. And some congregations I serve wondered, well, how is it that you chose St. Michael's? In fact, I didn't choose St. Michael's. I was called to St. Michael's and I accepted that call. A difference between a choice that I make on my own and a response to a call that the Holy Spirit issues. Here we were, sort of this family with these two young kids. I will forever be grateful for him. He was really fantastic. He was really great. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, beginning at the 34th verse. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. We can serve what we love. We love what we understand. And so through education comes love. So we understand it, we appreciate it, we love it, we conserve it. I love the church service and some days I get just sheer joy from the introductory hymns and blasting out the glory of God and, and the, uh, the, the real positive I'm glad I came to church. Different people reading is always wonderful. Which is the most important of all the commandments. The scribe knew that there were 613 commandments in the Mosaic Law. There were the central 10 commandments, and around the 10 were hundreds of others meant to serve as a kind of fence so you couldn't get close to breaking one of those ten. And today, Jesus does two very significant things in answer to the scribe's question about which law was the most important. First, he weds two commandments together into one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That passage comes from Deuteronomy with Jesus adding the mind part to it. It's called the Shema, and every faithful Jew would recite it as a part of their daily prayers. Jesus takes this most important commandment and weds it to one from Leviticus, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus says, there is no other commandment greater than these followed by the prayers of the people, very special. Let us come before God in prayer, confident that God will hear and answer us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Need to know what's going on, particularly uh, around in our community and with our own members. Uh, these are all part of the service. They're all, you, you can't not enjoy them all. If we move on to the communion, bedrock of what we believe in. My favorite part of the liturgy at St. Michael's is the sacrament of Holy Communion. And I especially appreciate the opportunity to go into the garden for healing afterwards. Uh, to me, they're linked now in my um, spiritual participation in the service. I just think it's, it's the most personal part of the church service 
and that, that when I'm, in, I'm in communion with God when that happens. I do indeed kneel. In spite of the walker, I go up there. I don't want to sit in my seat. I want to receive it at the rail. The worship service that we do as Episcopalians is uh, at our best. We really just sing with great gusto. I love that because it's it's a pretty empowering sense of uh, of uh, spiritual grace. You get to see it in the faces of people as they smile through their singing voices. To me, singing is a way of praying. And sometimes if I get to church early, I will just read the words to the hymns, which to me are prayers. The whole congregation loves to sing. You know how loudly we sing. I mean, we really like singing. I love the music. I, um, I find it inspirational, I find it enriching, um, re-energizing. Everyone who walks into this space uh, finds it inviting. We all live on an island, we have a close relationship with nature, and I think we all find it slightly nautical. We feel like we're in an upturned hull of a boat. There's something captivating about it. And one of the, the things that I love about this church is that the door's always open. Lamella, a unique German architecture, has self-supporting structure, gave the sanctuary with no inside pillars or beams, an open and unobstructive view, along with a nautical feel with an inspirational touch. For people who've stepped into the doors of St. Michael's, they know that it, there's something very special about this place. You can come in wherever you are in your faith journey. Both black and white children sang to God in unison as one. It's a beautiful building, just looking up and looking at the beams and everything just leads to up. And my dear sisters and brothers, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Every time we moved, the most important choice after we arrived is, well, where are we going to worship? People who come here find peace, joy, love, acceptance, God. The Reverend Ellen Sloan, retired as rector of St. Michael and All Angels Episcopal Church, effective September 30th, 2019. I'm very, very hopeful and positive about St. Michael's in the future. They will flourish if they stay in community, that building up the common good is more important than their own good, is if they realize that it's prayer and action. The image of a journey came to mind. And boy, have we been on a wonderful, wonderful journey. Wow. The Reverend focused on congregational development, strengthening pastoral care, and creating a holistic approach to the parish's extensive outreach efforts. The Reverend encouraged the establishment of an annual Martin Luther King Jr. event. The event celebrates the fact that St. Michael was the first church of any denomination in Southwest Florida to integrate black and white congregations. The deep understanding that it's all about community and we're just not going it alone. And that's how Christ works. Father Madden inspired many youth of the island. Both black and white children sang to God as one. The Reverend William Van Oss became rector of St. Michael in 2020 with installation in 2021. Been selected to serve God as rector of St. Michael and All Angels Episcopal Church, Sanibel, Florida. This letter is a sign that you are fully empowered and authorized 
to exercise this ministry, accepting its privileges and responsibilities as a priest of this diocese in communion with your bishop in the 15th year of my consecration, the Right Reverend Dabney T. Smith, fifth bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Southwest Florida. Bill, do you in the presence of this congregation commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility? I do. Let us then offer our prayers to God for all his people, for this congregation, and for Bill, their rector. Forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Whatever the ripple is from St. Michael's, there's ripples coming the other way. It's not just us. Heard it, Ernie. <laughs> I've got an Aussie and Harriet. Right <laughs> bless you, Bert and Ernie, and bless this woman who takes such good care of you. Yeah. Zach's never seen me touch another dog. <laughs> this is Sky. Nope. Sky, bless you. <laughs> <A> repeat offender. <laughs> bless you and this woman who cares for you. I like feeling involved with the church. A lot of churches have adult acolytes and have all of the people that work there are adults. And here we have more kids, and I think that it makes the church seem more open to new people as well. And it definitely gets me more involved with the religion itself. When I first started coming to church, I was like, oh, you're making me go to church. But now, I guess I like it because I get to like be a part of the church. Anna was our uh, first daughter, and she's, she was born in Hainan, Hainan, China. And Jenna came from Jiaonan on the Yangtze River more in the central part of China. And uh, she was just a little baby when we got her. She was only eight months old. We went to Kazakhstan and adopted Leah, but we went to get Mia. And Mia's from a small town called, called Fuling. I was younger. I wanted to do it because my sister did it. I really want to do it, but yeah. Ellen never lets me. You have to be in high school. You start in high school. It moves you more than anything else that you do on the altar because you can carry the cross and that's more of a physical thing but it doesn't there's not as much connection but when you're seen because there's two of us you see half of the congregation and you help them and you help them come to terms with Christ it's really touching um, and it's different than just carrying the torches or carrying the cross or the gospel and it's deeper than all of that and I'm it's exciting to be in middle school and know that you're going to be able to do it soon. Yeah. And it's a little scary. You're always scared that you're going to pour wine on someone. <laughs> Redeemer and sanctifier of all life be with you on this beautiful morning and always. Transforming lives through Christ is the vision of St. Michael and All Angels Episcopal Church. Their mission is to demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ so that all may come to know God. Their guiding principles of faith, compassion, service, stewardship, inclusivity, and integrity will serve as their model to demonstrate Jesus Christ throughout their community. Christ, really at the bottom of it, okay, if you really want to do this, how are we going to do that? It's not just about praying, it's not just about words on the wall. And we came up with those principles, then we need to be compassionate, we need to be inclusive, we need to uh, be of service to others. And I think the first one we have is we need to have a deep, deep faith. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, 
you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We need to remember that life is short and we don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love and make haste to do kindness. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier of all life be with you and all whom you love on this day and all. Faith is prayer in action. You just see it in full bloom here at St. Michael's. I hope you have enjoyed this film about St. Michael and All Angels Episcopal Church. On behalf of St. Michael and All Angels, we really want to say thank you to all of those who participated in sharing some of their faith journey for this film and for giving of themselves in that way. Thank you also to Rusty Farce, the filmmaker, and to Mary Beth Gonzalez, production assistant. We hope this has been informational, educational, and mostly inspirational in helping you to know how the Holy Spirit is alive and at work here at St. Michael's. Please find us on our website, stmichaels-sanibel.org, or on Facebook or YouTube. We look forward to meeting you very soon.